Hey folks, what's good everyone? Shady's back and today we're gonna talk about isolation mode. I'm gonna have again more time like recording videos in general. Maybe I'm even gonna find some time streaming, live streaming because I said it like, you know, millions of times that I have a work, a job and then family, kids, school, all kind of stuff. So it's pretty hard for me to find like three hours, four hours straight or six hours even to play without being disturbed and st stuff like that. But <clears throat> now that we heading to the end of the summer, you know, school starts and, you know, I, I can schedule in more stuff for myself. But isolation mode. First of all, let's answer the question whether this is a good game mode or a bad one. Do I recommend you to play it or not? Well, I think it's the best isolation mode ever because uh, I like that level of excitement. In Northridge, back then, the way isolation mode worked is that you had multiple extraction points and also the airdrops were like all around the map. And if the airdrop was far away, then you like, like, you could decide not to run to that airdrop because it didn't make sense, it was far away. This is now different because we have one single extraction, which is at the end. Uh, and also the airdrops, at least how I see it is, it, is that the first airdrop is kind of like defining the area. And it doesn't often happen that the second airdrop is on the opposite side of the map. So I'm not saying that they are close, but they are somewhat, you know, in a, in a, in a distance, which is like easy to reach, especially if you're driving with a car. So I didn't answer the question. Do I recommend it? Yes. I think it's the best isolation mode ever um, because of how it's being designed, what I just explained. Um, and it comes with action because you cannot really avoid doing fights. You cannot like pick up some stuff and then sneak out of the map. So that's one, I mean, one reason why I recommend it. And the second one is like the loot. So it's not normal mode, it's lockdown mode. Yes, I know it's gonna cost you 30,000, which is for many of you like a, a, a big, big, you know, entrance ticket, but you know, you need to risk it for the biscuit, like 30k isn't that much if you consider that if you get out of the map, then you're going to extract with a guaranteed um, 250, 350,000, because that's kind of the, you know, the amount you can, you can gather during the, this isolation mode. Basically, you can get like a T4 helmet, a T4 armor, um, for weapons, you're going to have an FAL or fall. You, or uh, an M110 or a Mosin, but you know you want you want to pick the full and the M110, of course. Then you can put some extra scopes into your backpack, which brings us to a total of like 300,000. So that's basically the the ticket to start the game mode. It's gonna cost you 10% of what you get in case you can extract. And we're getting there, we are almost getting there. I, I think you already know what I'm trying to say. But if the uh, starting fee is 30,000 and like the guaranteed loot is approximately 300,000, it means that you only need to extract one single time out of 10 games, okay? And why am I saying that? Well, I'm saying that because that's kind of the pitfall of this game mode you think that um, it might be easy to get the 300,000, but it's not that easy. Like, um, at the beginning, most likely you're not gonna have other teams around you. So you're gonna have time to dress up, you know, find yourself Scarrel, T3 and all kind of stuff. There are locations, by the way, where you have multiple spawns and you need to do fights early game. But the actual, the real fights happen when you have the first airdrop and then the second airdrop because like every player is hopping into the car and then, you know, getting to that airdrop because the best loot is in, it's within that, you know, airdrop. It's pretty obvious. And that's the pitfall. That's the pitfall because uh, you need to win at least three fights. Okay. Maybe one early game. 
maybe one at the first or second airdrop and you have to win the last fight. It, it, it cannot happen that multiple squads gonna extract at the same time because the helicopter has uh, three spots. I mean, it could happen, you know, if you are the last one alive and then there's another team mem uh, another team, and there's also one guy who is alive and then you don't attack each other, but it's not going to happen too often. So uh, let's stick to the version where we say that it's a last man standing map. So it, that, that's, that's the downside of it. So you need to do the fight in order to extract. Which is actually, in my opinion, pretty cool. And this is, I think, the reason why many of the bigger streamers like, um, you know, Monarch has been playing the map. And I, I think Iros as well. And there might be more. Um, because it's actually challenging. It's not that easy as it was in the previous modes. You have to win the final fight. And in order to do so, you need to be smart because at the last location you're gonna have at least one team but maybe even more maybe two teams three teams or four teams or it, I, I don't know i i had a game i where like we had at least four cars arriving to the last location it can happen still i think it's worth playing it because uh in my opinion you can actually extract like two times out of ten games even if you are playing solo and th that's the thing i want to say so if you are playing solo then in most of the cases your teammates are not going to stick with you maybe they're going to even steal a car to do their own stuff which means that in the final fight in most cases in many cases you're going to be alone versus multiple enemies keep that in mind so you're going to have a decent advantage over others if you play this map with friends and if you all stay alive, then when it comes to the final fight, it's going to be like a full squad attacking, you know, some random survivors. The next question is going to be how to survive the map. And of course, Mr. Icestream already published a video, a 30 minutes video explaining the perfect way of surviving isolation. So I'm not going to go through that in very detail because I just assume that either you, you, you know what needs to be done because it's very straightforward or you have watched iStream's video, but on a high level, there are still a couple of things which, you know, I, I want to highlight. So early game, just get yourself a gun, you know, um, the gray box or the advanced weapon case. T3 armor and have um, an AK-74N or a Skarel as the starting weapon. Try to find attachments like um, grip, try to find a scope if you can, and start um, putting some medical items into your, into your rig. Don't like pick up everything, but in the end game you're gonna need um, smokes, okay? Always try to have at least one smoke grenade or two, and it can also help you picking up the stuff from the airdrops. Um, you're going to need painkillers, and whenever you find search kits, okay, then pick that up because you can never know if you're going to need that or not. But that, that's it. That's early game. Then, again, for me, it's like super obvious, but if you can see the first airdrop, then you head to that first airdrop and um, try to pick up or loot that airdrop. You're gonna find T4 armor, T4 helmet, and then um, in the other case, you're gonna find eventually an M110 or a fall. If you have teammates then, uh, or friends, like a duo, then uh, the way I've been doing it with Sequel is that I was, I was offering him the gun from the airdrop, I was picking up the armor, and then in the next airdrop, I was picking up the gun, he was picking up the armor. But, you know, it's up to you. If you're greedy, you can just pick up like, like, like everything. And once you're done with the first airdrop and the second airdrop, then you're going to see like the final, like the final zone, the extraction zone. And don't forget that um, you're going to get an additional airdrop at the very end of the game. I think it drops at one minute or two minutes or something. So there is, again, extra loot to be picked up, like where you're going to have the extraction, the helicopter. And in that phase, what you want to do is to um, preferably have some kind of T3 ammunition, 
if you find any magazine or something which has T3 ammunition, then try to use that, even if it means that you need to like empty your current magazine and reload that ammunition, use that because that one single fight is going to make or break the deal. So, you know, if you can extract, I mean, if you can win the last fight, then you're going to extract and then you're going to have this 300,000. If you play for 25 minutes and you pick up all kind of stuff and then you get the last extract and you die, then it's, you know, it's just a waste of money. So you, you have to be prepared for the final fight. Don't just, you know, go into that zone, you know, straight with your car and then like think that nobody's going to be there. Because I think in every single game, there's going to be a fight at the end. Keep that in mind. So all the 20, 25 minutes you spend before that should be preparing for the final fight. And then, you know, you go to that area, you kill everybody, you extract, and then happy days, 300,000, easy 300,000. And then you repeat and repeat and repeat. And then, you know, this mode can actually make you rich. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's that easy. So um, I think that most of you are going to extract one or two times out of 10 games, or maybe even zero times. Because this game mode is full with all kind of you know, players. You can meet legend players, ace players, all kind of players. It doesn't matter. It's somewhat fair because even the legend players are not having like the devastating D5 um, ammunitions and highly modded guns. So you're going to have a bigger chance fighting them. But still, it's, it's not easy. It's going to be challenging. But if you're taking it seriously, then you can actually farm some money. I, I'm not saying that it should be a sweaty game mode. You should have fun, but you know, when you get to the airdrops, then, then focus. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna be just a waste of money and a waste of time for you. That's it for the isolation mode. I enjoy this mode more than the normal mine because it has an objective. It doesn't make me feel that the map is super huge and uh, I don't know what I'm doing and if I'm gonna meet like any players. But in this mode, like, you kind of know what, 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 what needs to be done. You get into the car and it makes it more interesting. It makes it more fun to play, at least for me, because I don't like the normal, regular mind map. I don't know why. It's just too big. I don't have time for it. But anyways, leave your comments about the isolation mode in the comment section. Let me know if you like the game mode, if you hate the game mode, if you like the mind map why you like it, why you don't like it, and feel free to share your experience about the specific game to let people know what happened with you in the isolation mode. Happy gaming, guys. Good luck on isolation. See you around. Shoot, loot, subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye.